Holmes had an ossuary box that they have discovered, and on the inscription, you find James, son of Joseph, brother of Jesus. Well, the skeptics come along and they say, that's way too on the nose. <laughs> like, uh, old ossuary boxes, they would mention who you're the son of, so it would make sense to say James, the son of Joseph, and that fits the Bible, because who's, who's Jesus' father? Joseph. At least the earthly one, yeah, Joseph. But to say brother of Jesus as well, it feels like a forgery. And so all the skeptics were like, oh, this has to be a forgery until they went and started looking at the microbial patina in the grooves of the inscription. And sure enough, they discovered this was authentic to the time period. And so there we have a validation that there's a James, that there that he's the brother of a Jesus and the son of a Joseph. Now, the likelihood that that's not the Holy Family seems pretty small to come from that time period as well. Now, the James Osherey box is an interesting thing. The first thing that's about it is that it has been, still, it's still debated on whether or not it is truly the James Joseph Yahshua in the Bible. Now, the name James was a very common first century name. The name Joseph was a very common first century name. The name Yeshua was a very common first century name. So it is plausible that there are multiple families within the first century Judea who had a father named Joseph and two sons named James and Yahshua. Now it is uncommon for a brother to be mentioned on an ossuary unless that brother was someone of significance. This would lend to the idea that there could have been a James, who had a brother named Yahshua, who also had a father named Joseph. You can validate this by looking at some of the writings of Josephus. Josephus mentions a Yeshua who had a brother named James, and that's possible that this is that person. So could this be an authentic ossuary of James with a brother named Yeshua and a father named Joseph? It could be. Even though there is a little bit of skepticism in the fact that the part of the name Yeshua being added could have been added there, not because of the patina, but because the grooves are different. When you look at the grooves of jo James, son of Joshua, it's deeper than brother of Yeshua. Now, some skeptics say that this could be because, well, some scholars say this could be a forgery and others say that this could be because the limestone could be more difficult to engrave, great engraving on that saint on that spot because limestone can differentiate as you go along the limestone. So it's possible that this could be the ossuary of a first century Jew. And ossuaries were only used from about 20 CE to about 70 CE. So therefore, this could be a real person. But the problem is. Does this mean that the biblical Jesus is real? It could mean that there was a historical person named James, named Joseph, and who had a brother named Jesus or Yeshua. Possible. But does it mean that he walked on water? Does it mean that he healed the sick? Does it mean that he fed 6,000 people with a two-piece fish sandwich? It doesn't mean any of those things. Does it mean that he was the son of God? Just because there might be might be people that these stories are based off of doesn't necessarily mean that the miracle part is correct, that the son of God part is correct. If you were to go with that, then you would have to say that we can identify that Alexander the Greek was a real person. We have coins. We have pottery. We have the conquering that they did. We have buildings that would let you know that Alexander conquered all the way to Persia, to India, or in and around up through Egypt. But does that mean that Alexander was born immaculately, that he was born of a special birth, not of a virgin, but just had a special birth, that he had a miracle birth? Does it mean that? We have coins, we have writings, we have all these different things about Vespasian. But Tacitus wrote, the same Tacitus that many Christians use to try to validate Jesus, Tacitus wrote that Vespasian, under the power and the guidance of Serapis, healed a lame man by standing on his hand, healed a blind man by spitting in some dirt and rubbing it in his eyes. 
So if you go by that standard, then you have to say that Serapis is actually a divinity, that he is a god, that he exists, because you're using the same, that by the same standard you use to validate the biblical version of Jesus, you would then have to validate Serapis as well. We can use so many other examples of how there could have been an actual person, but then that person got legendized. Whether we're talking about Johnny Appleseed or we're talking about John Henry, whether we're talking about George Washington. George Washington, was he the first president of the United States under the Constitution? Sure. Did he chop down a cherry tree and his father asked him who did it and he said, I cannot tell a lie? Well, we know that that was political propaganda that was put out. We know it's not true, basically. We know that John Henry didn't carve through a mountain with a pickaxe in one day. We know that's not true, but we know there was a man named John Henry. So it's a very common name. All three names are very common in the first century. Ashraer was only done during that time frame. It could actually be a James who had a brother named Jesus, and Jesus could have been an actual person who did say that they were the Messiah and tried to be the Jewish Messiah. But yet there are at least four different variations of that Yeshua character in the writings of Josephus. But it is very plausible and easily understood how these people could have been legendized into the creation of what is now Christianity. This is why when you read your Gospels, you will notice that the amount of miracles that they perform increases with each Gospel. You did like three or four or five in one book. Now, all of a sudden, you did those three, same three or four or five, but an extra two, three, four. And then the next time you do an extra four, five, six, then the next time you do an extra seven, eight, nine. And so the person becomes legendized as, they, as their story grows. Kind of like when I went fishing in the Gulf. The fish was only 19 inches. But if you let me tell the story today, the fish was about 30 inches. So it got bigger as I got older because the story becomes legendized. So y'all have a great day. And it was actually only a 19 inch fish because they made me throw it back because it wasn't big enough for you to be able to keep it in at the time frame. And I was pissed and I just said, forget it, I'm not fishing anymore. But y'all have a great day. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey, good vibrations.